Hello and welcome to Motomouth. I'm Moshe K. Levy. And today we're going to be talking about the effects of UV on our health and on our riding gear. Now you may remember in the second episode of Motomouth, uploaded in May 2016, I reviewed these held air and dry gloves and reported that their long-term durability was compromised by the excessive fading on this one glove while this glove held fast. Coincidentally, in October 2016, for my real job, I started in a new position at Solar Light Company in Glenside, Pennsylvania. Now, Solar Light designs and manufactures advanced photonics equipment, basically instruments that either measure or produce light for professional researchers and scientists. I've learned a pretty good deal about light science in the interim and decided to apply my newfound knowledge to motorcycling for the purposes of this show. Specifically, how do the sun's rays affect our health? How do they affect our gear? And how well does our gear protect us from UV? Let's hit the road. I'm gonna take you to work with me today and we're gonna get some detailed answers to these important questions. Now we motorcyclists might not give it a second thought, but with each passing mile on the road, we're exposed not only to the elements we can sense, but to the sun's UV rays, which we cannot see. Over time, this exposure can have a profound effect on our gear and more importantly, on our health as well. So it's important first and foremost to explain what UV is. Ultraviolet wavelengths reach the Earth from the Sun and are invisible to the naked human eye since they're shorter than visible light wavelengths. UV wavelengths are generally classified into three portions which are measured in nanometers, or one billionth of a meter. UVA is the spectrum between 320 and 400 nanometers. UVB is the spectrum between 280 and 320 nanometers and UVC is the spectrum between 100 and 280 nanometers. UVC is absorbed by the atmosphere's ozone layer, so it's not much of a concern to us. However, UVA and UVB can cause plenty of damage by themselves. Prolonged exposure to these wavelengths is the primary cause of skin cancers, such as basal cell carcinoma and melanoma, which is the deadliest form of skin cancer in the United States. In addition to these serious afflictions, UV can cause a myriad of other issues, including premature skin aging, irreversible eye damage, and immune system suppression. So in short, protecting yourself from prolonged exposure is definitely in your best interests health-wise. Okay, we're here at Solar Light, and I've set up this little makeshift laboratory. The first thing we're gonna do today is pull some jackets that I have in my test rotation and subject them to ultraviolet protection factor testing. Now, as we discussed, in addition to its primary function of saving your hide in the event of a crash, your gear also serves as a protective layer between the sun's relentless UV rays and your sensitive skin. To this end, a type of spectral transmission analysis called ultraviolet protection factor can quantify exactly how much UV radiation can permeate the fabric that you wear. The UPF rating scale is between 15 and 50, with a designation of good for values between 15 and 24, very good for values between 25 and 39, and excellent for values of 40 or higher. So for example, a jacket with a UPF rating of 30 means that only 1 30th of the sun's skin altering UV radiation can reach the rider's skin. UPF ratings are becoming more prevalent in the civilian clothing industry as people seek alternatives to sunscreen lotions, but thus far they're not too common in motorcycle garments. So utilizing our freshly calibrated Solar Light Company SPF 290AS UV transmittance analyzer we were able to objectively compare some jackets I'm currently testing against the American UPF standard AATCC183. Let's take a look and see how they did. First up was this gorgeous 10 ounce waxed cotton Aristich Cousin Jeremy jacket, a general purpose four season piece, which achieved the highest possible rating of 50, meaning only 1 50th of the sun's UVA and B is getting through to me as I wear this jacket when I ride. Next up, it was the BMW Downtown's turn. Now this is a polyester jacket, even heavier than the Aerostitch, designed for colder weather riding, and so, not surprisingly, it too achieved the highest possible rating of 50. So based on these preliminary results, it's safe to say that all heavier jackets are gonna get excellent ratings by virtue of their thicker materials, but what about lighter gear like mesh? I tested this polyester nylon blend Scorpion Ascendant through its mesh paneling here, which is basically see-through, and it still achieved a very good rating of 25. So even with a lightweight mesh jacket like this, suitable for the hottest summer weather, you're still only allowing 125th of the sun's UVA and B to get through. And that's through 
most open part of the jacket, worst case scenario. Here's the data chart which shows the arrow stitch in BMW near zero on the x-axis and the Scorpion slightly above. Clearly motorcyclists who don even light summer mesh gear over their bare skin are assured very high levels of protection from UV. So in the process of shielding your skin from the sun over time, it's your gear itself that endures the abuse instead, and this can eventually cause permanent damage to it. The pigments and dyes used in the fabrics can fade, sometimes severely, and in extreme cases, the material itself may degrade, potentially compromising its effectiveness in a crash. So in order to determine the effects of UV on our Aerostitch and BMW test samples, I ran each of them under this 16S series solar simulator. Now this device, produces a fully calibrated UVA and B spectrum, 280 to 400 nanometers, with enough power to simulate one year in the desert sun and only 7.7 .7 days of exposure. So for the purposes of this test, the simulator's UV output was concentrated into a two centimeter spot beam, which hit the samples directly, allowing us to study the effects of a worst case aging scenario exposure to the desert region, such as Southern California. The specific test simulated exposure as though the rider was directly under the noontime desert sun for 32 months straight, according to the annual average desert sunlight cycle. This is a brutal sequence, equivalent to the duty cycle of about 15 to 20 years with the average American motorcyclist. The irradiation took 32 days for us to complete, objectively tested to the UV portion of the ASTM D2565 standard. And here's what we found. So here's the color fade of jacket fabric data chart. The y-axis on the chart displays the delta E, or the objective measured change in color of the fabric over time. A delta E change of two or higher is visible to the naked eye, and both jackets hit that point after the three month mark. The light tan cousin Jeremy had more of a linear fading curve than the BMW, as its 10 ounce wax cotton shell wore steadily and evenly over time eventually exceeding the downtown's fade level at the 36 month mark. This was the Aerostitch fabric pre-testing, and here it is post-exposure. The much darker downtown polyester shell had a noticeably steeper fading curve until the 25 month mark, where it plateaued and did not fade much further. Here's the downtown pre-testing, and here it is post-exposure. Now to be certain, both of these garments performed superbly testament to the manufacturer's careful selection of durable pigments, dyes, and UV inhibitors in the shell fabrics. For reference, most consumer type jacket fabrics tested are bleached white after only six months of similar testing cycle exposure. So I think we've learned a couple things after this little experiment. First and foremost, those of us who choose to wear good quality gear on each ride are continually protecting ourselves from the devastating effects of prolonged UV exposure while upright and not just from the pavement in the event of an accident. Second, as expected, even the lightest weight jacket here, the Scorpion Mesh, provided very good shielding from UV rays, which is welcome news for those at risk, such as fair-skinned riders or those who ride at high elevations a lot, or for those who ride often near reflective surfaces like water, where the UV bounces back up and hits you again. Third, faded garments can rightfully be seen as a badge of honor by some riders, but only if they require serious saddle time to achieve this aesthetic. In that regard, both the BMW Downtown and the Aerostitch Cousin Jeremy that we tested more than qualify in this regard. They both gave excellent performance over a duty cycle that's realistically about 15 to 20 years for the average American motorcyclist. So the bottom line is this, discerning motorcyclists demand adequate gear longevity in exchange for our hard-earned dollars. And in response, the manufacturers have to take precautions to ensure that the bleached look doesn't arrive prematurely by using effective UV inhibitors, pigments, and dyes, as well as by formally testing production material samples to ensure that quality standards are met. Until next time, keep the shiny side up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more of your favorite Moto Gear reviews.